the, the more irrelevant science becomes, the harder it is for them to figure out what it all means. We are, welcome everybody to Mr. Sashan. We're using this book. Uh, you can use any Mr. Sashan, Mr. Sashan you want. But we are in the middle, we actually near the end of chapter 23 on another. So we did uh, up until now, so we're on page 165, and it's the, the second from the bottom paragraph, but all call, which is the third man. So just to quickly review, the first man, um, the first man is um, uh, uh, self-deprecation. How do you get, how do you get humility? You have to realize you're not such, you're not so important. Uh, yes. oh, first man self-deprecation that was at self -deprecation, the beginning right. that was at the beginning of the chapter but you're a worm uh, you're going to the worms worms love you etc uh, etc et right know where you're going where you came from and who you're going to stand in front of in judgment right you're like, we're, 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 take yourself down a few pegs Right, focus on how great God is and how small you are. The second man is you have a job to do. Right, that's uh, on the second paragraph on page one sixty five. Machavatov, what is your job? Right? You you're here to save the world. You're here to make a difference in life. Uh, you're here to uh, you're not here to a vacation. Uh, this isn't a party. It's not a cruise ship. You're here to to the work the you know you see you, you see uh, October the seventh is a great example right October the seventh is a great example right if, if you'd known what was going to happen on October seventh what would you do now if you didn't know you're an idiot I think personal some of my best friends are idiots but um, how could you not know it was going to happen I mean there, there are lots of people who knew it was going to happen. I'm not talking about insider uh, um, uh, military people who saw troop movements and things like that. But I can show you videos of rabbis 35 years ago who said this is a death trap. This is this is a disaster just waiting to happen. And it, you know, and the, and the, without going into all the politics and everything else. But if you knew it was going to happen, right? Do, do, do we know what's going to happen? Do we know, like, you know, th this kind of government is not going to solve the problems? Do we know, Do we, you know, like one of the reasons why Biden is pressuring Netanyahu to, to uh, pull the troops out of the Gaza Strip is because Biden only cares about four more years, five more years at this point, right, if he gets reelected. So all he cares about is another five years. So by then there'll be somebody else's problem. See, he doesn't care. Like, is it? In other words, if, if the idea was to pull out right now and leave the Gaza Strip and just put, you know, security fences around and tanks all around and and everything and everything, um, for the next five years, it's not going to be a problem. They're going to they're going to be spent. They're going to be they're so behind. They're so diminished in their capability. It's it's a disaster over there. So. For, as far as Biden's concerned, it's not going to be a problem. Netanyahu, on the other hand, is not whether you like him or not, but he's not worried about himself. He's not worried about the next five years. He's worried about his grandchildren who are living there. And he knows that if you leave mm -hmm. the problem now, it, it's going to be a massive problem in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever it's going to be. So, so, is it, so when you're dealing with a world we know it's going to be a disaster. So what are you doing about that? That's just one of the problems. That's one of the problems that we can talk about. And then there's a lot more than that. So how do you, you know, how do you, how do you sleep at night? How do you sleep at night? So that's the second man. You with me? So what's the third man? Oh, that's the second. Kabbalah paragraph on page 165. The all hakol above everything, yet benin tamid he should be thinking constantly. Lahaki chalusha saseko how weak the mind is. Nothing personal, 
So my best friends have weak minds. Right? How she of how much how weak human beings' mind is. And how how much they are um they they mess up and lie. They're subject to mistakes and lies, falsities. Right? We 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 you know we think it's one way and it's really the other way. Not like they're not out out and out lying. She because it's far more um um Yes, to read the English, isn't it? I think it's easier. Uh, the many answers of those subjects. For he's far more prone, for he is more, for he's more more prone to, to embrace an error than to acquire true knowledge. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it. For all can you read to me, so if you realize that, when you realize that, you should be fear, you you are tummy should be afraid, constantly afraid the danger that is upon us. I mean, if I catch the Lumod Tamid, and you should constantly seek the caller down from every person he can, the Shmor Tamid Le'esa, to listen constantly to, for advice. Penya Kishel, lest he stumble. For who Masha Amaru, and this is what the rabbis say, Zikram Abok, Ezechocham, who is the wise one, Halamed Mikol Adam. Someone who can listen to advice is a wise person, which we'll talk about more. So you see, this is why you're very rarely, I, I would say, I would say the vast majority of people really don't care, nothing personal, but the vast majority of people don't care about their children. You know, I, I don't want to besmirch uh, everybody, it's just most people, right? Because anybody with two brain cells that synapse at the right speed will realize that the chances that his children will end up in the disasters that you see he sees on the on the TV all the time, right? Is very very high. Drugs in schools, and that's the least of the problems. You know, anybody who's got a, uh, again two brain cells that synapse at the right speed has to be worried about this stuff. The 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 what's going on in the in the world with children. So anybody who's like thinking about it. Would be asking around, like you know, how do we deal with this? How do we... and anyone who's doing that ends up in in my case, in, in ends up in Asia Tour, but there's other, there's many other places that you'd end up, right? Therefore, what most people don't care. Now, if you tell them that, they'll get annoyed at you. <laughs> it's just between us chickens. <laughs> don't tell how them. How they not care? I mean, don't they? I mean, I don't have kids, so. I... To me, it just seems like if you did have children, you would care about them. Yeah, it would seem that way, but you see that it's not. There. Well, in defense of some it's not people, everyone. I'm sorry. No, it's not everyone. I said it's not everyone. It's just most people. Right, but I think it's because they're sort of like been dumbed down or overwhelmed. I mean, isn't everyone sort of in Mitzrayim right now? I don't know what that means. In other words, like they're everyone is so the overwhelmed. They all seem, what? I don't know if with that low, you think no, with that like low, everyone's overwhelmed. Oh, for let me sure, ask you. Let me, sure. let me ask you something. Let's suppose, for instance, the federal government says, you know, this school business is just not working for us. We're going to close all public schools. Thank right? God. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. What would happen? Most people wouldn't send their kids to school. Most. Some would. Right? You thought, what? Because they just don't. He said, what's the point concept of public school? People don't care enough about their children to pay for their education. So the government says, okay. But they are paying for it. They're paying for it through their taxes. I know. We're that's all, because we they are don't all think about it. They don't think about it. Right? Although it's not really, it's not really the people who should be who are paying for it because it's, it's the it's the middle class who are paying for it. But then, nevertheless, right? They're not paying for it. They don't think of it as paying for it, and they're not paying as the, the big the 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 bulk of the expense. Whatever whatever it happens to be, why wouldn't, is that? Because people don't care. The government recognizes that people don't care that much about their children. I don't say they don't care completely. They don't care that much about their children. They're not enough to pay for their education. 
But how is that even, you know, a guarantee of your caring that just because you're paying for the education doesn't mean you're going to get a good education? No, I, I understand that. But, is it, but at least as a, as a beginning, it's a good sign. Right? I don't know and if I agree. People, there's those of people who could afford education and they don't. You know, you, you, you've heard me. This is a point that the Torah makes by the uh, two tribes that come to Moshe, um, and they uh, they want they want to take land outside the, the land of Israel. Oh, um, said, Moshe says to them, well, "You care more about your sheep than you do your children." Now, how can you say such a thing? Right? Not saying done. No, no. God, God, dude. God was one of God. them. Yeah, Manasseh well, was one of them, though. What? Manasha was half, one. I think it's half the tribe of Manasha. Yeah, correct way. The so, ones who wanted to stay on the other side you know, of the river. Because it's good for the sheep. So he says you care more about. You, have you ever met anybody who would admit that they care more about their money than they do their children? Even the people right. that I say don't care about their children that much, they would never say such a thing. Everybody thinks they care for their children absolutely. Even the people who put them up for adoption, right? They care about their children. Everybody says they care about their children, right? So what about what about the uh, so so th these are the tribes. These are people that came through the desert. These are the students of Moshe. How can Moshe say to them, "You care more about you"? How can anybody care more about their money than children? So it's a very simple. It's a very simple concept. Imagine for a minute you had four schools. One's a public school. One cost five thousand dollars a year. One cost. $50,000 a year, and one costs $500,000 a year. Each one, you get the education to which you spend. Right? It's, it's, you're getting a good value for money. Right? So you have one family that's dirt poor, right? And they scrape together whatever they can. Really, by rights, they should send their kids to public school. But they send their kids to, to the, to the, to the $5,000 a year school. They borrow money. They take credit cards out. Blah blah blah, and they push themselves. Right, you follow? Mm -hmm. The super rich family they could send their kids by right to send their kids to the five hundred thousand dollar year school. But they go, listen, you know, we went to public school and we turned out okay, right? We're going to save a little money and send their kids to the fifty thousand dollar school. It's still a very very good education. I mean, it's better than most people ever get. Right, you understand? And we're still fifty thousand and save the money, go on nicer vacations, buy a nicer house, buy a yacht, maybe, et cetera, et cetera. Right, you follow? So you've got one kid in the fifty thousand dollar score and one kid's in the five thousand dollar score. Which kid's gonna turn out better? The five thousand dollar one. Oh, ding 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 ding. Why? Because uh the child that goes to the five thousand dollar school knows that the parents made a huge amount of effort for them to even be able to afford to go to that school. Oh, right. that's an assumption. Right. It, it's more than that. You see, you see, when it comes to children, this see in, in life, there are many things that are second best is perfectly fine. Like I've got a birthday coming up. I'm just I'm just putting it out there, I would love a Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> but, right. but if you send me a jag, I can live with it. <laughs> right? In, in life. Second best is, is perfectly fine in many things. Yeah, Gio, you didn't tell him you're getting him a Maserati? A Maserati, that will do too, right? He's <laughs> so driving he almost a 20-year-old car. <laughs> yeah. So in many things, second best is perfectly fine, right? In some things, second best is a disaster. What's that with your children? Right? When you do second best in your children, you, I, I've seen this so many times with rich people. They think they're doing better for their children because they're giving them better than they had. No, you have to do the best you possibly can. Yeah, but you know, the only problem I've always had with this, pro this scenario is that Really, for the rich family, the best that they can do is spend more time with their kid. Oh, yeah, I'm just that's, using 100%. That's, that's, 100%. That, that's the thing that's the, the yes, thing they have 100%. less of that they can't give. 100%. 100%. I'm not arguing that point. But the, the point I'm making is just using money as a symbol of everything. 
like included in that. You know, yeah. it's very interesting. They did a study, which just shows you how stupid people can be. They did a study and they found that the children, you know, how come all the kids, you know, in high school, every high school in America today, every high school, the private ones, the Jewish ones, ever has access to drugs. If a kid wants drugs today, it's tough. When I was at high school, you couldn't get it. But today, everybody has access. So they wanted to see like, what made the kids, right, the same access become drug addicts, and the other kids sitting right next to them in school, not a drug addict. And they found that the, the, one of the factors was if the parents read to the kids. So they said, oh, you want to save your kids from drugs? Read to them. No, you idiot. Right? It's like, if you care enough about your children to read to them, then that is the $500,000 score. Right? Because it's included in all of that. In other words, the parents send their kids to the $500,000 score is because they want to give their children everything they possibly can, which would include reading to them and time with them and everything and everything. Right, you understand? The, the, the kid knows he's important. Right, when the kid, there's an old story they tell, I don't know whether it's true or not, but my kids came home from school once, one of the rabbis told, told them, he said, he said, what's more important? He said, the rabbi said, the rabbi, there was a story of a rabbi asking his students, what's more important than learning Torah? And one of the kids said, chulant. <laughs> so the rabbi got upset, so well, how do you say chulant? He says, well, every time I say to my father, I want to learn with you on Saturday, he says, after I eat my chillant. So the kid <laughs> says, it must be the chillant is more important than learning. Right? You've got to be careful of these messages your kids get. Right? You follow? So the, the point is, the point is that um, um, uh, where are we getting it? How do we get onto this from humility? The third man. One who third takes man. advice. What's that? One who takes advice is wise. Right, right. So you see, so you see, right, we are so stupid, we have no idea how things work. What is the effect of it? So anybody who's got kids, every anyone who has kids should realize every parent thinks they know what they're doing. <laughs> like Rev Nark used to say, he used to say, nobody walks down the aisle saying, I'll give it a 50-50. Right? Everybody thinks they know what they're doing. You're getting married, it's easy, piece of cake. Whatever, how stupid do you think I can be? Right? Everybody knows how to get married. So everybody walks down now saying, I, this is for life. Right? So what went wrong? You obviously don't know what you're doing. So anyone who's got kids would realize, I, I think I know what I'm doing, but everybody else thinks they know what they, knows what they're doing, and they mess up their kids. So I, I, I've got to assume I don't know what I'm doing. You got to figure. You know, you've got to be open. You got to figure out and look at all the possibilities and ask people. You said if you anyone who does that will end up in Asia Torah or some equivalent program, right? Jews or non-Jews, anybody who asks that question will be thinking, "What do I got to do?" Will be asking the questions, "What do I got to do to to make sure my children turn out the best they possibly can be?" Right. So that, that's what he's saying here. You've got to realize how that, that's that's children, right? All the more so, our, uh, the truth is with ourselves. Everybody thinks they know what they're doing in life, including me, right? We all think we know what we're doing. I right? don't. To some degree. <laughs> so, yeah, so you've got to be open. You've got to try and figure out. That's what he says, right? He said, oh, come. Who is the wise man? Right? Means he's wise because he knows, he doesn't know. So he's every person he can possibly get to. Can you give me some advice? Can you give me advice? What did you learn? How did you figure this out? How did you succeed? Is it etc. 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 Right? And that's what he says. If you can listen to advice, it's very hard to listen to advice. Everybody thinks they listen to advice. But the but the reality is that 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 whatever someone had we see this with other people. It's very easy to see with other people. People don't listen to advice, including me. And it's very easy to understand because if I thought you were right in what you were saying, I wouldn't think the way I think. 
it's very hard to see that the way I'm thinking is completely backwards because we can't think outside our thinking. It's like thinking outside the colors. In other words, if, imagine you're painting a picture and it's missing, it's missing a blue. It needs blue, but you're colorblind and you can't see blue. So you can't understand what it is it's missing. You can't think outside of your experience. So if we haven't experienced it, we can't understand what it is we're missing in life. It's very tricky, very hard to be able to, to have somebody who to be able to listen to somebody saying to you, you know, this is this is not the way to do it. Right? It's not is the 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 the, 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 the mistaking Solomon says, right? The wise person loves being wrong. Alchev Musa. You gotta love being wrong. That's that's the trick. I I I I read out a few weeks ago the Charlie Munger. And they asked him, How come you're so successful? He says, I realized very early in life that of all the talents I have, which weren't that many, but the one thing I had is I loved being wrong. It just, I'm not saying he, it, it, that was his, in everything in his life. He didn't say that. Maybe it was. But he said when it came to business, and you'll see this, and I'm sure you have seen this, go tell a businessman he's making a mistake. It's very, very difficult. <laughs> They're very jealous of their idea. Are oh, you, you to tell me how to run my business, you know? Right? Now, most of the time, you know, you don't have any, any, uh, Anything to say to them, right? But um, he 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 loved being wrong, right? Because it, it, we all understand this, right? If you're making a if you're making dinner for yourself or for family, whatever it happens to be, and you've got a, a turkey in the oven or whatever it happens to be, right? And you're making it, you know, you've got your recipe, and someone comes and says, "You want to you want to really make it really good." Add some lemon to it or put some of these spices on it, whatever it happens to be. Right, you follow? And you listen and you do it and it turns out phenomenal. Wouldn't you be happy? Right? So we relate to that, we relate to that in food. We should relate to it in the wisdom of life. All the more so. All the more so. I've not used to give the example. You're you're backing out of your driveway. And someone shouts at you, you idiot, stop. And you stop the car and you go, who's he to tell me I'm an idiot? Right? He says, your back door is open. Right? You're just about to knock it off with the lamp, with a with a, with a flat with a, from the uh, telephone pole. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> right? That's how we should think about like, criticism. Right? We will, should want to know. When I was in yeshiva, we used to have these Musa groups. We had these groups. We'd go around the room telling everybody, this is what you're doing wrong in life. And we loved it. It was the best time. People don't do this anymore. And people listened? Yeah, but we weren't, we were in, you only joined the group if you really wanted the, the heavy stuff. Would they tell Rav Noach? What's was that? He, was he in the group, Rav Noach? No, no, it's all the, it's just the students. Uh, he, he told us how to do it. Right? We go around the group, the room, and go. This is what your problem is, and you know, every every week another person was on the hot seat. We call it the hot seat. We didn't do it all the time, right? But that was a that was a great thing of the of the yeshiva. We was like we were into self. We want to be the best we could be. Well, the good thing about a group like that is, like, let's just call it kids in a group. They'll, they'll call you out. They'll react and they'll call you on uh, your excuses and everything like that. Yeah. And I always felt that was a key thing in... Sarah's um, everything she dealt with that the groups that she attended they they don't take um, uh, any uh, 
Well, they call you out. Let's just put it that way. But let me ask you a question, Rabbi. Which is harder, to know that you have to seek advice or to take the advice that you've sought? Oh, that's a good question. Which is hard to know you have to seek advice? That's hard, I don't know. They're both very hard. I mean, it's a, it's a different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. It's a different way of thinking. Well, both of them are different ways of thinking. Uh, yeah. Many people don't want to take advice, but just yeah. think, oh, I don't need to. Yeah. And... It's a do and to think, oh, okay, I need to. That's a different way of thinking. And then the see, advice that you get you see, often you, will require you to think differently. You see, um, where was it? I'm just, uh, there are three things that people don't understand, right? The first one is how important we are. People don't understand this. Unfortunately, evolution has destroyed people's self-confidence because we're just the, the result of random silliness, right? But we've talked about this, right? The, the argument between Carl Sagan and David and Mellick, right? What, yes. do you, what do you need a big universe? The universe tells you how important you are, right? See, it, anybody who, like, inherits from his, uh, uh, you know, great, great, great grandfather, uh, a, a priceless clock or silverware or china will we'll take utmost care of it, right? They want to know, how do you protect it? How do you look after it? How do you oil it? How do you, right, you follow? So the more you, you feel yourself, you're, you're precious. I've seen this many, many times that people who have children who have serious health issues they listen to anybody everybody they're completely open and they're grateful for the advice even if they've heard it before even if the guy didn't know what he's talking about they're happy to take it because the children are important so we don't feel we don't we don't feel we are important so because of that you know who are you telling you know who are you telling to who, who are you to tell me how I should run my life? <laughs> it's like sports. Like if I want to play cricket this way, it's my business. What do you care? Because cricket isn't important. Right? Now, soccer, that's a different story. <laughs> right? So we don't, you know, when we don't, we, there are three things that people do not understand. One is how important we are. The second one is what we're just talking about how difficult life is, right? It's, it's not, it, you see, you see it, it's like we have children, right? You have children. So what do you give your children? Toys. What's a toy? And generally speaking, it's a puzzle, right? There's, there's Barbies and dolls and playing house and things like that and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, dolls' houses. And, but a lot of times it's puzzles, right? So you give a kid a puzzle, right? And he's got to put the rounds peg in the round hole and the square and it is you take out all the pegs and they go and they're uh, and finally they figure it out you follow and the kid thinks it's a genius now relative to the problems you have to deal with in life he's an idiot i wouldn't say that to him <laughs> but he's an idiot even just because you can get around but why does he think he's a genius because relative to all the problems he's ever had in his life, he solved the most difficult. He can't imagine there's anything more difficult than the problem he just solved. Right? So you see, the Almighty deals with us in the same way that we deal with our children. He sends us problems. Why? That's a whole other story. But nevertheless, he sends us problems. And we solve those problems. And then we get bigger problems. Because... You know, once the kids solve the, the pegs and the hole, you don't give them the same part the thing anymore. Next time it's like, you know, more sophisticated, got different shapes and all kinds of the triangles, right? Whatever happens to hexagons, right? Is it so the same thing? The Almighty sends us problems. So when we solve the problem, we think we're a genius. That's why he says in the end of the chapters, is who was the 
Who was the most humble person? Moshe. Because Moshe understood more than anybody what there is to know about life. And he understood that, that, that you don't you don't know anything. We the only we think you're a genius because we don't can't imagine any problems bigger than this. But really, we, the Almighty is giving us little puzzles to play with. We don't know anything about life. It's nonsense. As I've said this before, if you took all the people who ever lived and you took everything they knew and you put it in one person, and that one person was the smartest person that ever lived. They would not know 1% of what there is to know. Shlomo. What's that? Yeah. Shlomo Hamel. Right. But he didn't know everything everyone ever knew. He knew a lot. Don't get me wrong. You follow? But it's still less than 1% of what there is to know. That everyone's walking around like they're the geniuses. No, you idiots. <laughs> you don't know anything. Right? Uh, living well, that's with the that. third man. What's the that? third man is you don't know anything, so be open to listening to others and yeah. listening to the messages that God sends you. Hundred percent. The, the only solution is that. The only way to get through life is that. We we are so incapable of figuring it out, of understanding what life is really all about. We we know so little. Right, that's the third man. When you live with that, whoa. I had that's written it. last week, live with your responsibility. Right, that's that was second man. man. That's the second man. Uh, so the third man is live with the knowledge that you know nothing. Right, right. And be open to to the advice of others and, and the messages that God sends you, either through them or directly. Right? Specifically your wife. <laughs> really people can we can all see other people's stuff much easier than they can so what do you do when um you know you get advice or judgment from others that is not accurate yeah well it might be accurate to them it might not be accurate to you or is that what you mean? Well, well, go ahead. There's a range. You know, there's some people like, you know, crazy, frothing at the mouth. Just want to tell you how, you know, Jews run the world or whatever it happens to be. right? And then you've got like, you know, uh, there's a whole range. So, you, you know, you've got, to, you've got to try and evaluate. I mean, that's all part of the whole problem is just trying to um, figure out you know, who who can you listen to? It, it's not it, that's part of the whole problem. Where where the the King Solomon points out that the Torah points out that when King Solomon comments on this, that the Sadiqim, the righteous, are blind men in darkness. I think we've done this now. In the beginning of Masilat Sharim, I remember oh, this. Okay, right, and the, and the evil. King Solomon says that the, the Torah says that the Sadiqim are the blind men in darkness and the evil are the seeing people in darkness. They think they can see in darkness. They, they think they can see. The more you realize we're in darkness, right, the more the, the more success you'll have in life. It's the way to live. That's another. Right? We're, we're incredibly important people. We're incredibly important beings. You know, I've said this many times. Right? Everything on this planet does at least one thing really, really well. It's it's unique in this thing, right? Monkeys climb trees. Uh, um, uh, dolphins swim. No, nothing swims like a dolphin. Nothing soars like an eagle. Nothing climbs a tree like a monkey. Right? Everything is born with one thing does well. Human beings are born incompetent, and it's downhill from then on. And they've perfected incompetence. Yeah. You understand? So how come like we didn't get, we got the short end of the set? I mean, how come evolution got to the point where it created a being that can barely walk and chew gum at the same time? 
<laughs> you want to see an argument against evolution? This is the best argument. Right? There isn't there isn't one thing we do that an animal doesn't do better than us. So, like, how do we evolve from anything? No, I, I I don't have a problem with evolution if you say it the other way around. Right? The height of evolution is an amoeba. I mean, they figured it out. They just sit in a a, a, a pool of goo, right? And all they have to do is split. That's it. I, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> Fulfill my purpose in life. I split. <laughs> they don't have to worry about eating. They don't have to worry about looking good. They don't have to do anything. Right? You follow? They figure out life, right? You see? So you see, we're, we're, brought, we're brought into a world where it's impossible to, fi to figure it out. The, the obstacles and ignorance and everything and everything. So part of the whole game is listening. That's the humility is the purpose. Moshe was the most humble man that ever lived because humility is the purpose to live with that. But I don't know. I saw a beautiful quote by the 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 uh, um, Rebbe. Um, oh, escapes me. Now he says, "There's nothing more whole than a broken heart." And that moment when uh, you're experiencing something like that is a very meaningful experience. Now you should get there without having to have bad news. Uh, uh, where's the rap? He's an African his name now. He is from Poland, from Europe. But anyway, right? So you see, the three things that people have a hard time understanding what, how difficult life is, we just said, how important we are. And the third thing is, they don't understand you can't mess up your life. The Almighty is not going to let you. The Talmud says there are 10 people that, that don't get to Olam Haba. Right, that's it. It's an exclusive list. Right? Everybody else is going to make it. The Almighty is, you, you're not, you can't fail. You, you, he gives you puzzles. In other words, right, you give your kid a, a jigsaw puzzle, you give your kids a Lego. Can they mess it up? There's no definition of messing up. <laughs> you can't mess up a Lego set. Right? You understand? The Almighty gives us puzzles. You can't mess it up. He doesn't give you a puzzle you can't you can you you can you can mess up on. Oh, you understand? It doesn't let you play with jumbo jets. He gives you puzzles that you can actually figure out. Right? You can't mess up. Now, it's a question you're gonna you're gonna get there in six months or a year. The, the speed at which you can get there, that's up to that you can do, but you you're not gonna mess up. We're good? Yep. Thanks I guess you first funny. it this is a little bit hard, Rabbi. I'm sorry. This is a bit hard because you're you're sort of like dealing with um opposite perspectives. What do you mean? I understand. In other words, uh how life how difficult life is, and then you say, Oh, you can't mess up. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right. It takes a little to a bit yeah, to, no, wrap, to your wrap your mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't mess up because Hashem is controlling your 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 future. No, you, you see, again, like you take the smartest person, you would know less than one percent of what there is to understand. Mm -hmm. Right, for when the when the kid can gets the puzzle, right, he thinks he's a genius. The mistake is thinking that he understands everything about life. He thinks that because he just solved the biggest problem he ever had, and he can't imagine a bigger problem than that. So he thinks he understands. He you, the mistake is that, no, mm -hmm. life is so complicated, it's so sophisticated, you can't even begin to imagine how complex, how, 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 how vast it is. It's sort of like a, a scientist from a thousand years ago is sitting with Einstein, right? It's like you know the guy from a thousand years ago. He doesn't understand anything. Do you think Einstein understands anything relative to what there is to know? Einstein's a village idiot. So you said 
to realize how sophisticated lies. Now, the puzzles that we get, we solve, right? God's giving us easy puzzles. He's not giving you, like, figure out quantum mechanics, Right? Or even the next, whatever's next on after quantum mechanics, whatever's going to fill the next uh, the next level of science. Right? He's not asking us to figure that out. It's a very interesting thing, though. I put it in my book. It's a very interesting thing. The, the, the more uh, irrelevant science becomes, the harder it is for scientists to figure out what it all means. We see that again. What's that? Yeah, yeah. You say Please that again? say that again. The the more irrelevant science becomes, the harder it is for them to figure out what it all means. In other words, Newton figured out the laws of thermodynamics, right, from look, watching an apple fall off a tree. I don't know what an apple cost in those days in the was it the uh, 1700s? I don't remember what it was. 200 years. Yeah, 1700s. Right, for Today, to get the next, you know, to get the, the Boson Higgs particle, they have to build a mile-long tunnel under Switzerland that cost a billion dollars. Right? And even then, they don't get all the, all the solutions. So you're saying that, like, the the cutting edge of science today is really irrelevant to our lives right. and that as it becomes more and more complicated it becomes more and more irrelevant and they they don't understand why like why they're even doing it right because it has no practical lack of application so the mighty says i'm not letting you have this information i'm closing the door on it i'll give you newtonian physics and I'll even give you Ein's E equals MC squared. But after that, I, I, you know, do something meaningful with your lives. <laughs> Stop wasting your time on quantum physics. It's not going to help anybody. You don't and need I to just know thought of, I just thought of a use for Hamas's tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly They're not right. straight. <laughs> They're not straight. So, so basically, basically, in order to be successful in living you have to be open you have to make yourself a vessel for whatever it is god wants you to go through and wants you to understand yeah so the puzzles the almighty gives you it's like you give your kids puzzles so you give your kid a puzzle you follow and you come in the room and they're taking the light socket off and trying to figure out how the electricity is working no, I don't want you to do that. You know, that's not what the puzzle. Is. I gave you put the put the plugs in the thing. You understand? The Almighty gives us the puzzles, right? How to make peace? How to figure out Hamas? How to figure you know deal with the Iranians? Blah 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 blah. I don't want you to know what happens to an atom when it hits the other side of the universe. Because it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. What are, what are you going to do with that? You know, they all ask this question. What are you going to gain from any of this information? None of them can come up with any any reason whatsoever. And the things that Hashem wants us to figure out are right in front of us. Right in front of us, diseases and uh, uh, and poverty. Right. I just saw a great video by Mr. Beast. Right. It's a great video. Everyone should watch it. It's on. Um, he went into this Guatemalan village of peasants living in the mountains out there. Like abject poverty, no running water, dirt floor, not but the sweetest people on the, on the planet, right? And he built them houses so they could live in. We, we had the science to build a house. He put in solar, solar, solar panels, uh, filtration systems to have clean water. You know, we, the science is there. We don't need to go into like, you know, esoteric. Uh, uh, silliness about what, what happens to an atom when you when you spin it around at the speed of light. You know, it, it's it's information that is not necessary for human beings. Right? It is necessary if you want a war with God. Well, that's what they're trying to do. That's that's, that's what they're point. real. That's the real right. reason they're doing right. all that. Right. That's exactly right. If they want to what they want to go to war with God, they want to figure out how the world works. So they don't need. They can say, "Oh, you see, we figured it out." So they're really, they're really like the 
the ones trying to build the Tower of Bavel. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just someone just sent me a great article. So the astrophysicists are now all in a tizzy because they they they, they these these new um, the latest telescopes they have that can see further and further and further and further back. They just found out that the what the galaxies they're seeing at the early stages of the universe, right, are just as sophisticated as the ones in the later stages of the universe. And they've got no information for it. They like, they're throwing out everything they <laughs> No, but don't you get to, to a point where you're like, you know, most of these articles have to be baloney because they keep changing and they make no sense. Like, oh, you know, the universe is this big. Oh, no, no, it's double that size. No, 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 it's increasing at the speed of light. Really? Oh, come on. <laughs> I I'm still BS. waiting. I'm still waiting for the answer to the question. If the universe is expanding at the speed of light, what's it expanding <laughs> into? Yeah. And how are they measuring that? Oh, come on. What a load of baloney. <laughs> Actually, what you just said, Rabbi, about these looking far back and they're sophisticated. Yeah. That if there could be a proof of Hashem, there it is. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Right, that's what they're finding. They, uh, the only way to explain it is God made it this way. <laughs> I don't want to. The truth uh, is, like you know, a, a scientist who is like the third man will see God when they yes. are pursuing their science. 100%. It's only the ones that don't want to see God that want to rebel against God that are going to try and go further. Yeah. No, the first people that, that cracked DNA were started Watson. off as, as non-believers. Watson and, and Crick. Yeah, they, and they became believers. It's, it's not possible that this just evolved. It can't have evolved from anything. It's a creation. It's, it has such engineering into it, engineering features that it, it, it doesn't evolve. It's not chemicals just reacting to each other in a pool. But anyway... That's another story. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.